Hello everybody, this is Pilkit Chabda. In this video, we'll be discussing the next problem of the code forces round 645, which is E, are you fired? So without further ado, let's discuss the problem. The problem says that Levin works as an accountant in a large company. Levin knows how much the company has earned each of the n consecutive months. In the ith month, the, the company had income equal to AI. Positive income means profit, negative means loss and zero basically means at par means no change because of the general self isolation the first uh, seed of n by two months income might have been completely unstable but then everything stabilized and for the last floor of n by two months the income was the same so basically all the last floor of n by two numbers are equal to each other Levin decided to tell the directors n minus k plus one numbers the total income of the company for each k consecutive months so basically we are looking at every window of size k and we know that the number of such windows are going to be n minus k plus 1 and in other words for each i between 1 and n minus k plus 1 he will say that the value he will say the value a i plus a of i plus 1 up to, to a of i plus k minus 1 for example if a equals to the given array and k equals to 3 he will tell the Director is the sum of the first three numbers, which is minus one plus zero plus one zero, and this and the these three numbers, which is three, and these three numbers, which is five. Unfortunately, if at least one total income reported uh, reported by Levin is not a profit, that is, the income is less than or equal to zero, then the directors will get angry and he'll fire the failed accountant. So you can see that in this case, the first number was actually not a profit so he would have been fired if we reported if he reported this uh, these numbers so we have to find any such k such that for each k months in a row the company had made a profit or report that it is impossible so we'll be given an array uh, in, in which we'll be given the first seed of n by 2 values and we'll be given the value for the uh, later part in the later uh, floor of n by 2 numbers and uh, we'll have to come up with a k for which you know every window of size k has a sum greater than zero or we have to re report if it is impossible to come up with any such k okay let's look at uh, let's take a look at the constraints and the input format we'll get n which is the number of months uh, that we're talking about and then in the next line we'll have seal of n by 2 integers that will be a1 a2 of 2 2 a of n by 2 is the seal and the value of ai can be from minus 189 to 189 we actually call this 10 to 199 the income of the company in the ith month okay the third line will contain an uh, integer x which again can be from minus 189 to 199 and it will represent the income in every month from seal of n by 2 plus 1 to n okay i hope the question is clear and for the output we just have to print one line uh, an appropriate integer k or minus one if it doesn't exist if there are multiple possible answers we can print any so let's have a look at the examples in the first case we can see that the i'm sorry i need to turn this on yeah we can see that the array that is given is two minus one two so for k equals to two we can see that the incomes that will be reporting will be one and one so it is good for the second case we can see that the array is going to be 2 2 minus 8 2 2 for k equals to 1 we will see that this is a negative 1 for k equals to 2 this will be a negative 1 for k equals to 3 this will be a negative 1 for k equals to 4 this will be a negative 1 and even for k equals to 5 it will be uh, the total sum is going to be 0 so we can't come up with any value of k and for the third case we can see that the array that is going to be made up is minus 2 minus 2 6 and then 3 minus 1s we can see here for the value k equals to 4 the set the value is going to be 1 in this case then uh, it's going to be 2 then it's going to be 3 so it's positive in each case so 4 does the trick all right so let's discuss the solution let's discuss the approach now uh, if you want to give it a try you can pause and give it a try but you better be uh, you know conscious now on because the solution is tricky and you need to pay attention so the first thing the first important point is that if let's say we find a k for which you know every 
window of size k has a positive sum then every multiple of two of k which is 2k 3k and so on every such k which is obviously less than or equal to n is going to be possible answer the reason behind that is very simple to make a window of size 2k or 3k or maybe let's say x times k what we will be doing is we'll be just taking out uh, let's just talk about 2k for now let's say if, if, if you're saying that we have uh, answer possible for k then every every possible window of size 2k is going to be made of two windows of size k only if we, we join two adjacent windows of size k then we make a window of size 2k and if we know and we know if, if, if every window has some greater than zero then joining them will also give a positive sum so every possible uh, you know multiple of k will be a possible answer right now the second observation that is obviously a result of the first observation itself is that let's say he let's say we have you know uh, okay what i'm trying to basically prove here is that we, that we'll have at least you know one possible answer in the range n by 2 to n k equals to n by 2 to n if the answer you know exists exists at all if if, if it doesn't then for sure this is also not going to work so the claim is that answer exists if and only if there exists a k from seal of n by 2 to n such that the given condition is satisfied for that particular k now to prove the fact let's say there there is a you know uh, if, if there is already a k that gives us uh, you know all all sums of window k as positive uh, with k greater than or equal to seal of n by 2 then the thing is true right but now let's say there is some k that belongs from you know 1 to basically uh, floor of n by 2 and the answer is true for uh, this case or uh, the answer is true for some k in this range now i'm going to prove to you if we have some k we'll also have some k in the other range as well in the in the in the you know later half as well uh, let's say if we uh, you know multiply some number to k then it, it, it would be uh, a possible answer as well let's say if i consider the number uh, k dash which is equals to n by k's floor value into k since we're taking n by k's floor value here we know that this number is going to be for sure less than or equal to n right and uh, since we are taking n by k's floor value and multiplying it by n it basically is as good as saying n minus n percent k you can uh, give it some time you'll find out that i'm uh, actually saying correct uh, it will be equal to n minus n percent k and uh, we know that the value of n percent k is less than or equal to floor of n by 2 which basically means that this value of k dash is greater than or equals to seal of n by 2 so even if we find you know uh, if we find a value of k that lies in the lower half we we'll definitely have another k dash which will lie in, lie in the upper half as and it will be a valid answer so all i'm saying is that if i find an answer in the range you know uh seal of n by 2 to n then well and good we found our answer but if i don't found uh, if i don't find any answer in that range it is for sure that there must have not been an answer in the lower range as well because if there had been uh then i would have also found an answer in the upper range okay i hope this uh, argument is clear now i'll tell you how actually you know proving the fact that we'll have the answer uh, we will have at least one answer if answer exists at all uh, such that the value of k is greater than or equal to seal of n by 2 the thing is if the value of k is greater than or equal to seal of n by 2 when we uh, when we look at the first window let's say we have uh, a1 a2 and up to 2 a n and here is some seal of n by 2 here now we if when we look at the first window of the smallest value of k which is seal of n by 2 and when i you know uh, move to the other windows to the next and just to the next one and so on i know i'll be subtracting some values from here in the first transition i'll be subtracting a1 and the second transition i'll be subtracting a2 but i am for sure that i'll be adding the value of x there you know 
if, if we know the sum of the first window i know that the second window sum will be the first window sum plus x minus a1 the second windows will be uh, you know the, the next windows sum will be plus x again and then again minus a of 2 right i hope you get the point so this is something extra because we know that we'll be adding x only when we are making a transition from the current window to the just next window okay so now let us uh, you know try to get to an equation where we can uh, basically uh, you know check all the facts easily so let's say now i'm checking for some alpha if alpha is a possible answer or not now the first thing that needs to happen is that uh, you know prefix sum of alpha has to be greater than zero by prefix sum i mean that a of 1 plus a of 2 up to 2 a of alpha i can store that in another array where p of i, I will tell me the prefix sum of i and uh, then i'll be able to basically uh, access the prefix sum in big of 1 i'm just calling it p of alpha for now the first thing is that p of alpha has to be greater than zero now the second thing is that p of alpha plus 1 minus p of 1 has to be greater than 0 right because the, the sum of the second window is going to be that but if i rewrite it i would want to say that p of alpha plus x x is basically the number in the second half minus p of 1 is greater than 0 right and if i move to one more uh, you know if i make one more transition i'll say p of alpha plus 2x you know uh, i'm just moving uh, I'm, I'm, in, the, in, the, in this one i am representing the array sub array from 1 to alpha and this one it is 2 to alpha plus 1 2 to alpha plus 1 and in this one i am going to write the expression for 3 to alpha plus 2 and now p uh, you know p of alpha plus 2 is going to be p of alpha plus 2x and i am going to subtract p of 2 from it since it will give me the sum of the values from 3 to alpha plus 2 and this should also be greater than 0 for any general i any general i when i am you know talking about the uh, sub array from i plus 1 to i plus 1 plus alpha minus 1 right uh, because you can see that the last index is basically the start index plus 1 and here i am adding you know uh, 2x and subtracting p of 2 and then the uh, sub array starts from the just next index and for any general i i'll be wanting the you know uh, I, I, I would want p of alpha plus i so it will have me like uh, i'll get it from p of alpha plus i times x and i'll need to subtract p of i because uh, the sub array is starting from i plus 1 uh, this actually evaluates to i plus alpha this is why i am writing p of alpha here so this will be p of i and i need that to be greater than zero for every i for which we can have a window right so yeah i have established this fact i'll be erasing all this and i'll be writing just this one again what i want is i want p of alpha plus i into x minus p of i to be greater than 0 for all i belonging to 1 to the last number now the last i will be such that i plus alpha equals to n because for the last window uh, you know for the last window the last index of that window is going to be n from, from that i get that the value of i is going to be n minus alpha so for all i belonging to 1 to n minus alpha i want this situation i want this equation to be true i'm sorry i think i no i did not make a mistake it should be like this only so if i rewrite this we can see that this part of the equation is entirely dependent on i and the things that we already know it, it, it doesn't depend on alpha it doesn't depend on our parameter and uh, if we take them to one side and have this p of alpha in the other side what we can say is that i into x minus okay let let me put it another way what i can say is p of i minus i times x should be less than p of alpha for all i belonging to 1 to n minus alpha this should be the case now to to check that for a given alpha what i can do is i can make another array in which you know that array will basically uh, be such that let's say the array's name is p2 
such that p2 of i will be equal to this value p of i minus i times x and now i want that you know uh, all for all of the values between 1 2 and minus alpha these values should be less than p of alpha now to check that in big o of one time what i can do is i can do one more thing i can uh, you know instead of storing these values in p p2 i can store the prefix maximum values because if the maximum of all these values is less than p of alpha then all of the values that are smaller than that will obviously be you know will automatically be less than p of alpha and if the largest value is not less than p of alpha it means that we have found at least one value which is not less than p of alpha which is not following this equation which means that alpha cannot be our possible answer right so i hope the intuition behind the clear behind the solution is clear i know it was a little fast and it may be difficult to get it inside the head that fast maybe you may need to uh, you know rewatch the video till now but i am going to go to the code now uh, it may be better uh, once i read you through that okay so first things first take the input for the n make the required arrays ar is going to store the actual values that i am going to get as input pre value will tell me you know the prefix values the, the where prefix of i will tell me a of 1 plus a of 2 plus a of 3 up to 2 a of i and pre pre 2 of max is basically you want to store the thing that i was talking about those values which is uh, the value was as far as i remember it was pre of i minus i times x okay so it will it will store the prefix maximum values for these values okay i have made them i have made the arrays i have set these zero values to be zero and pre to max of zero to be minus infinity so that it does not mix, mess up with the pre to max of one and the further values because it is the minimum possible value okay and uh, for the first seed of n by two numbers which is n plus one by two n plus one by two actually gives us the seal of n by two uh, i'm taking the input for the rri values and i'm taking the input for the x and then i'm going to seed of n by two plus one to n and i'm assigning each of the values to x and by this point i have my input now i'm gonna need to process the output uh, process for the, for the output and uh, i'll iterate towards the array and i'll you know make up the uh, pre and pre to max arrays and I'll, I'll you know uh, pre compute them before actually uh, iterating for alpha or let's say k so uh, since i since i said uh, like i said pre of i should be uh, you know uh, prefix sum till i so it will be prefix sum of i minus one because i minus one will contain the sum till i minus one th index if i just add ith indexes element uh, the value of the ith index to it so i'll have pref of i and the current well will basically tell me the value of this for the current index which is pref of i minus i times x exactly what i wrote and i want the prefix minimum maximum of this value so i just say pref2 of uh, pref2 max of i equals to max of the current well which is which, which would have been the value of the current index and i just take the maximum with the you know pref2 max of i minus 1 because i also want the maximum of all of the values uh, till i minus 1 and pref2 of max is going to hold that so uh, pref2 max of i is going to hold the maximum for the values from 1 to i okay i hope that makes sense now i'll be iterating for my k value since i know that i need to only check for you know uh, seed of n by 2 to n and uh, when i say seed of n by 2 to n uh, n by 2 to n uh, don't uh, I, I need you to understand that if if, if you know if, if i weren't to check just for from seed of n by 2 to n this trick wouldn't have worked because for the smaller values of k when i'm when I'll, i would have been making the transitions from the first window to the second window and so on i wouldn't have been sure that uh, what will be the value that will be added to the uh, you know sum by making the transition but in this case i can be sure that even during the first transition the value that will be added will be x so i can you know uh, so i was able to get out a pattern uh, get a pattern out of that which helped me you know uh, basically get this equation and uh, yeah then let's continue from seal of n by 2 to n i'll be iterating and uh, for you know for the k for, for the value of k to be a possible answer the first thing needed is that the first possible you know the, the first window has to have a positive sum so pref of k has to be positive 
and also all of the other values that we just talked about had to be positive so i just need the pref2 max of n minus k to be less than pref of k right because that's what we saw right uh, after having solved that equation I, I hope you remember so if if that's the possible if, if that is the case for any k uh, from c of n by 2 to n i just print that k and return zero so that i can exit out of the pro program and uh, if i didn't find any uh, you know such k in the loop then i just come out and print minus one okay so that's just it i hope the code is clear if you have a doubt let me know in the comment section i'll try to help you so this was it for this video guys see you guys in the next one